Peace. I just wanted to take a moment and just build a little bit about being abstract. And the reason why I wanted to build on that is because, for example, we have a series of our lessons in 120 called Actual Facts. And our actual facts, they basically just give statements about the dimensions of the planet Earth. Um, one of the actual facts tells us that Mount Everest is 29,141 feet high. Another one tells us that sound travels 1,120 feet per second. The Arctic Ocean is 390,000 square miles. The Pacific Ocean is 68,634,000 square miles. So it gives us kind of like dimensions and orientates us in regards to how vast the planet Earth actually is, our homeland. You know, and that's very important to know that because in a psychological sense, it expands your world view because now you're not just looking at your world or life itself as just a square block that you live on. You know, it gives you a much greater sense of of the vastness of this planet. You know, so actual facts are very important, but outside of just the psychology of having access to that information about the dimensions of where you live at, a lot of us have not learned to take it from of an, an abstraction and put it in a, a, a context where you can practically apply that information to your life. Basically, you know, once somebody finds out that light travels 186,000 miles per second, that's the born actual fact. What can I do with that? <laughs> you know, what does that mean? And I just wanted to give some insight into showing you how to have, how to make that mean something to you in your life. So that you can apply that information. For example, if you take that same born degree and relate it to the born degree in the one of fourteens, in that lesson down in the bottom it says that the universe is everything, sun, moon, and stars, they are planets. Planets is something that's been grown and made from the beginning. So now what does that have to do with light traveling 186,000 miles per second? Well the one thing that where it says that the universe is everything, sun, moon, and stars Everything is everything. You know, that's a saying that a lot of us that a lot of us use. And what that means is if everything is everything, then all is actually one. Meaning everything is interrelated, everything has some relationship to something else. Meaning you can look at a pile of ants and see the socialization in their society and learn something from them apply it to human relationships and societies and something that you can actually use and learn from. You can study plants and see through the process of photosynthesis how they absorb light and convert that into life and apply that to your life. You know, you can study a relationship that two human beings are having and see what you should do or what you shouldn't do from just observing the way in which they interact. So everything has a relationship to something else and can be learned. That's one thing that you see that's consistent with a lot of indigenous societies and a lot of ancient or classical societies where we've always utilized life as the greatest example of learning and a mold for us to study true growth and development or evolution. You know, um, one thing that you see in comedic societies is you see us using zoomorphic forms. You see us using symbols like scare beetles, or you see us using symbols like ibis birds, you know, or you see us using uh, hawks or falcons, you know, as symbols to teach us life lessons. So now, it makes it a little more difficult when you have actual facts that just tell you statements about, you know, Mount Everest is 29,141 feet high. What does that mean to me? <laughs> you know, or... Sound travels 1,120 feet per second. Okay, yeah, what? You know, or light travels 186,000 miles per second. So I wanted to kind of focus just on that light traveling 186,000 miles per second, and I wanted to show you the relationship in that born degree. Now, like I said, that born degree says planets is something that's been growing and made from the beginning. So when you look at the planets in the solar system, one thing that we say about them is that they're celestial bodies. Now, if those are celestial bodies, what is a terrestrial body? You are a terrestrial body because the same type of physical composition that makes up these planets is what makes up your physical composition. So there are correspondences or mirror reflections of one another. That's one reason why when we talk about the planet Earth, we call it her, usually. You know, we say that it's Mother Earth or we look at her seasonal changes or her weather as Mother Nature because we recognize 
that this is something that has been grown and made from the beginning the same way our physical composition has been grown and made from the beginning. The same way this planet has an atmosphere in the form of changes in the weather, we have an emotional atmosphere. You know, so when you take it back to the born degree and the actual facts where it says the light travels 186,000 miles per second, the same way when you look at the solar system and you have planets that have a different distance from the sun, the same way we have planets in our own lives in a social way that are a different distance from us as being the source or the center of our own lives. So if it takes 186,000 miles per second for light to travel, if Mercury is 36 million miles away from the sun, then what that is telling you is it takes approximately 3 minutes and 20 seconds for light to reach the surface of Mercury because of the distance it is from the sun. Now that same light that takes approximately 3 minutes and 20 seconds to reach the surface of Mercury, it takes 6 minutes to reach Venus because that's 67 million miles away. It takes about 8 minutes and 30 seconds for it to reach Earth because that's 93 million miles away. But then when you get into Mars being 142 million miles away from the sun, it takes about 12 minutes and 45 seconds. So the further you get out into the solar system, surface of that planet, the same light that reaches Mercury in 3 minutes and 20 seconds, it takes 5 hours and 50 minutes to reach Pluto, because that's 3,680 million miles away from the sun. So one thing that that's also telling you in the form of socialization or relationships is, all of us have people who are planets that are a different distance away from us. And it's important to actually understand that, because you don't want to take a person that's Pluto or somebody that you just speak to or that's just high and by and, and they're, they don't really have an intimate relationship with you, you don't want to unreasonably put them in a position where you expect the light that you have or the relationship you want to establish with them to reach them in the same way as reaching Mercury or somebody that's close to you. Because what ends up happening is you begin to create friction in your relationships or in your social environment. So the same way you have planets that have their own orbit <laughs> and a respectable distance from the sun and light reaches them at different rates, we have to organize and assign our relationships and our lives in the same capacity. So one way that you can identify who's who in the zoo <laughs> is you recognize how long it takes for your light to actually reach people and accept it for what it actually is. You know, sometimes we may see somebody who is Uranus, no pun intended. You see somebody that's Uranus and you want them to be closer to you. So you're striving to reach out. You're striving to get them to respond to you immediately or to develop a certain relationship with you. And they're not responding in a way in which Mars would respond. You know, the light that you're sending out to them is not coming back to you or is not actually reaching them, and they're not even absorbing it in the same way that the Earth is or that Venus is. So instead of trying to take Uranus <laughs> and make Uranus Venus, you just have to acknowledge that person for the orbit that they choose to be in. The same way the planets in this solar system are in the orbit that they choose to be in. And it's very important to take that into consideration because, like I said, you can begin to create friction and conflict or drama within your relationships because you want someone to be what they're not choosing for themselves to be. All you can do is just put the light out there. All you can do is do what you do. And people respond to you in the way in which they choose to respond. And that's something that we have to accept, especially in a social environment, because it's important to that and peace. And a lot of times when you see people who have a lot of conflict and drama and things like that going on in their lives is because they're trying to make or expecting people to be something that they don't choose to be. 
And it's very important to understand that because you can put yourself in a position where things are not harmonious, things are not running smoothly. And that's something that you can learn just from studying those actual facts. You know, light travels 186,000 miles per second. So, like I said, when you apply that to that born degree, and you see that planets is something that's been grown or made from the beginning, you understand that we are all planets. And everybody has their own orbit, everybody has their own diff distance, and everybody absorbs light and processes it in different type of ways. One thing that I also want to encourage those of you to do is to actually study planets. You know, not just get into side real astrology or something like that, or trying to think of, you know, abstract ways of metaphysical interpretations of this, that, and the third, of what this planet... Study the mythology of planets. Study the actual physical composition of planets. Do they travel in a retrograde motion? You know, how many moons they actually have around them? What is, you know, the most chemical composition that this planet is made of? Because it gives you a greater insight and appreciation for those planets. And ultimately, the composition tells you about the composition and what I mean by that is it tells you about the different dimensions of a person's personality and the way in which they function in the same way that planets function in certain type of ways so you can get a better insight into okay I see that this person is more like Neptune you know and I'm not talking like I said about side real astrology where just because a person's born in a certain month they're automatically bound or limited to that particular planet ruling them no a person can function in the capacity of whatever composition or planet in which they choose to you know and unfortunately if a person just thinks that one planet bounds them or that's all that rules them then unfortunately people like that will only tend to function within that capacity but we all have the ability to be some planet because the same way that you are central to your own life and people are orientated around you like planets in the solar system you're also a planet to somebody else you're not central in their life you know you may be Pluto to somebody else you may be Venus to somebody else you know you may be the earth to somebody else so it's important to understand all of these different dimensions in a social type of way because it gives you more insight into how to establish those type of relationships and how to begin to structure them in a way where it's more harmonious and peace. So I will that this was inspiring, it was empowering, and it was educating those of you to start looking at these lessons, actual facts, in a way that is beyond just what it's saying on the surface and begin to learn how to practically apply them to your life. Because, like I said, take it all the way back to that born degree and it says the universe is everything, so everything is one. Everything has an inner relationship to something else, and you can learn from studying every different aspect of life of what you can apply to who you are because everything is a mere reflection of you. So with that said, peace and have a beautiful day.